Good afternoon, my name is Tom Hughes. I'm going to share with you some thoughts about how do we make diagnoses. I'm going to suggest to you that there are four domains of information which we use to make diagnoses. Draw four boxes at the top of your page. I think the first domain is worthy of the title or name story. And I think we, we are the historians, they are the storytellers, get our story from three sources. The patient is usually the source of the story. R and W, relatives and witnesses. They are often the providers of much more valuable information, particularly if someone's unconscious or has had a seizure or is, for any other reason, not able to tell us what happened. It would not be complete if we did not add OHPs, other healthcare professionals. All of us depend on one another to get story. We all give our versions of stories we hear to one another in the hope that one of us will be able to make sense of it. So we get story from three sources. Three sources are patient, relatives and witnesses and other healthcare professionals. Such is the demand for this lecture, people are still pouring in. So, to summarise the first part, we are the historians. They are the storytellers, and we get story from three sources. The patient, relatives and witnesses, and other healthcare professionals. The next thing we do is that we examine people. And we elicit normal signs, which are very valuable, and abnormal signs. And we do this with a range of techniques, ranging from simple observation to complex, detailed neuropsychological testing that takes a long time. We then have at our disposal what I'm going to call pictures and numbers. Pictures, x-rays, ECGs, CT scans, numbers, sodium, potassium, chloride. These are, I suggest, the four domains of information upon which we draw to help us make our diagnoses. I would then suggest there are four types of diagnosis, which I'm going to label one, two, three, and four. And I think these are in order of scientific credibility. The first is that using these four domains of information, we work out where, what, and why. Anatomy, pathology, pathophysiology. If we can nail these three things, we are empowered. But more importantly, our patient is empowered. Because if we can tell them where the problem is, what the pathology is, and why it's happened, we're in with a good chance of being able to treat them. Often, as you all know, we can't get to that level of scientific detail. We have to go on what I think is best termed a syndromic diagnosis. Sometimes I call syndromic diagnoses Snow White and the Seven Dwarf type diagnoses. We know that if we've got Snow White, some dwarfs, they don't have to be seven, a handsome prince, wicked witch, handsome ending, if all those components are there then it's probably Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Recurrent headache, unilateral, preceded by a visual aura, throbbing, nausea, vomiting, that has to be migraine. Or there's a very high probability that it is migraine. That's the basis of syndromic diagnoses. Sometimes we have to resort to an even less scientifically um, credible uh, diagnosis, which I called, call a symptom summary diagnosis. Things like chronic daily headache. What on earth is that? Chronic episodic vertigo. What sort of diagnosis is that? <coughs> We're just capturing what they've said in 20 minutes in one sound bite. Underlying all of these diagnoses, we have to remember that every patient we see has a psychosocial, financial, personal uh, predicament. And often it's people's predicaments which aren't just related to their medical problems, 
that bring them to clinic. It's their unhappiness, it's their job, it's their wife, it's their husband, it's their children, it's their grandparents. These things create problems that have the same manifestations as a traditional pathology. The behavioural outcome can be the same, but it's related to their psychosocial financial predicament. Whichever of these diagnoses we opt for, we are then left with, on this back of the envelope type summary of medicine, the so what, and the why, and then the need to give them back their story. We are a narrative species. We deal with story. And Julian Tudor Hart famously once said, when asked what should a patient expect from a consultation, he said they should expect some help in making sense of their story. We start with story and we end with story. The story here may be muddled, although very dramatic and real. By the time it is digested by this process, it may have a more accurate name, a better label, and the patient hopefully will be able to tell their story better. So, here we have on the back of an envelope the way we make diagnoses. When it comes to stroke, it's worth remembering that stroke is there. It's a syndromic diagnosis. It's a diagnosis based on the fact that someone was well, then they suddenly developed a deficit that could be construed as fast. So, there we have it. Story science pictures numbers, ideally to make a where, what, why diagnosis. But when it gets to stroke, this is the first hurdle at which we all can fall. Because the diagnosis of stroke is a syndromic diagnosis, as it presents at the front door. They were well, they suddenly became different, they suddenly can't use a part of their body, and the label of stroke is legitimately applied. But that's before the where, the what and the why has been worked out, and certainly before it's been proved, before it's been verified, that there is definitely a left frontal lobe lesion, and that it's definitely an infarct, not a tumour or encephalitis, etc. We've all been there. So part one of the lecture, making a diagnosis, beware of the power of where, what, why diagnoses and the potential problems that we lead ourselves to by making the syndromic diagnosis of stroke. Thank you.